All right, acid-base reactions. We're now going to take everything we've learned and we're going to put it all together and we're going to try to figure out how we can use everything, all these basics of chemistry, to describe a particular kind of reaction, which is the reaction between an acid and a base. These are also called neutralization reactions, as we will see, and we'll understand why they're called that. Or sometimes they're just called neutralizations. Uh, we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little, a little, uh, or write a little equation here. We're going to take an acid, all right? Now, of course, the acids, you have to sort of learn the acids and memorize how to write their formulas and things. Uh, we talked about them usually having some hydrogen in them that allows the hydrogen to release. And so, you know, we're going to take a simple acid. We're going to use hydrochloric acid, HCl. I'm going to leave a space. Leave lots of spaces so we can write a few things in between. We're going to combine this acid with a base. Now, bases, uh, they have a couple of different options. Typically, they either have hydroxide in them that can be released, or they have a way of pulling water apart. We're going to use a simple one that has hydroxide in it. We're going to use this magnesium hydroxide. So we know that's a base. And we can see that it's a base because of the magnesium hydroxide. Now, I'm running out of room, so I'll put a very small arrow. The products of any neutralization are always the same. What they are is a water and a salt. The water is obvious. You can see it from the, the H here and the OH is there. You can see how somehow they could make H2O together. All right. Um, the salt can be found by looking at the other things. If you look at the magnesium here and the chloride there, if they got together, they would make magnesium chloride, which is a salt. So we could write magnesium chloride as our salt. MgCl2. Um, you know what? I'm just going to back up. I ran out of space, so I guess I left too much room. I'm just going to rewrite that. Just give me a second. So we'll go a little bit closer here. Magnesium chloride. Okay, little arrow. And we have the salt. Nope, sorry. Magnesium hydroxide. Okay. Magnesium chloride and then water. There, we can fit it all in this way. So there's our salt. And here's the water that is produced in every neutralization equation. You have to remember that. There's no other way. You just have to remember that. Okay, just like you remember people's names, you've got to remember some things in chemistry. Now, this equation needs to be balanced, so I'll use my red pen here, and we'll balance it. When you're balancing neutralizations, um, you can leave the water till the end. If you look at the magnesiums and the chlorides, the first thing you notice is the chlorines are not right. Eh? There's two on the right side and only one on the left, so you fix that here. Okay, now the magnesiums are okay. Now for the waters, there's a, you can count up the H's and the O's if you want, but there's a, an easier way to think of it. If you think about H's over here and hydroxides here, there's two of them, OH's, right? And really you're trying to make H2O. Well, if you, if you put two of these together, it becomes an H2O. So you can look at this, and if you have two H's and two hydroxides, you're going to make two H2O's. There's one there, and you can make another one here. So you can think of the waters as H's plus hydroxides, hydrogens plus hydroxides. And thinking that way is going to show up later. It's, it is actually a reason why that's what's going on. So now we have it balanced. Now there's one more very important thing with acids and bases. And we're going to take some time today to review what this means, but there's a very important little thing that we have to put in here. We have to put little brackets and we have to put AQ because this AQ means something very critically important. If you don't remember what it means, study that. The water itself is usually not 
dissolved in water because water is water. So for the water, we either leave it alone or we put a little liquid sign there, whatever. But those eight cues are incredibly important because there's an entire story that has to be told when you see that AQ. Okay? So first of all, let's talk about that AQ, which stands for aqueous, right? So when we see the AQ, here's what we have to think about. It stands for aqueous, which means dissolved in water. But we also must, in our head, remember what that actually means so we can visualize this process. We can't just memorize a bunch of letters that mix and match and numbers. If you do that, you don't understand chemistry. You're just performing a trick like a dog who rolls over. We have to understand what all of these things mean. So let's start with the HCl, the hydrochloric acid right here on the left side. It's aqueous. Well, what does that mean? What it means is that when you put HCl into water, it means that the water pulls the HCl apart. Remember how we talked about this. The water is polar. The O side of water molecules are slightly more negative than the H side. And so what that means is that it, it pulls. Remember, opposites attract. So the negative O side of the water molecule is tugging on the positive hydrogen ion. And it pulls it away. And they get sort of surrounded by water. Notice how the O's of the water, the O side, is attracted to the H, which is positive, And the positive H side of the water is attracted to the negative chlorine. Okay. Now, there's something very important that happens right here. It doesn't happen so much with the chlorine. But what happens here is that interesting thing where the H plus can join up with the water and make an H3O plus, a hydronium ion. Okay, this is AQ, dissolved in the water. This is AQ. So as soon as that H is pulled apart, as soon as it's free, it doesn't float around. It joins up with another water molecule. There's a water molecule, and remember the oxygen has spots there where there are two electrons that aren't involved in any kind of bond just yet. But an H plus can come along, and it can hang out there and sort of attach itself to the water, making the hydronium ion. So that AQ, this AQ right here, is a very important thing. It's telling us a very, very important story about what's happening to that HCl once it goes in the water. What's interesting is we haven't even considered what happens yet when it reacts with magnesium hydroxide. That hasn't even happened yet. We're just dealing with the hydrochloric acid and what it does when it's in its solution of water. We haven't even mixed it yet, but this important reaction is happening. Okay? Now, what we can do is we can write a formula that describes all of this, or a little equation. We can write that HCl plus H2O can produce H3O plus and Cl minus. And we would need to put in the, the AQs where they belong. So this would be solid HCl. We didn't mix it yet. This is showing what happens when you take the powdery hydrogen chloride and you put it into the water. Then you get H's, which very quickly join up with other water molecules to form hydronium and chloride ions that remain surrounded by the water and are kept apart. And so in your head, when you see this little AQ right here, this entire story has to play out in your mind. And you have to understand that what you really have in your little cup is not just HCl 
floating around. But you have HCl that has reacted with water. The, this little H has been pulled away and he's been added to the water, leaving behind the chlorine. You must remember that whole story is happening. Okay? When, and look, we haven't even started. We just looked at the very first thing. Okay, so we've covered what this is. Now there's another similar story for this one. Let's do the mag excuse me, the magnesium hydroxide. And let's remember what that means. Again, if we take some magnesium hydroxide solid, right, and we drop it into a cup of water, what will happen to it? Well, when it goes into the water, the water, because it is polar, will also pull on these ions. The negative side of the water molecule, let's draw a bigger cup, and let's see what happens. The magnesium is going to be pulled away from the hydroxides. And of course, there'll be two hydroxides here because of the way it balances out. And so our water molecules are pulling. And uh, here we have the negative side of the water molecule. So, whoops, that's an H. I guess I better fix that. Surrounding the magnesium. This is what dissolving is all about, remember. And so we get the O's like this. The oxygen is tugging on the magnesium, pulling it away from the hydroxide and surrounding it. Over here, around the hydroxides, we have O's. Uh, we have water molecules. It's the H side of the water molecules that is attracted. The positive side of the water molecule. Right, so it looks, it looks the same at first glance, but you have to be careful to get the right side of the molecule surrounding. And these things are what we say dissociated from each other. We use the word dissociated, right? So this equation I drew up here is sometimes called a dissociation equation because it shows how the HCl gets pulled apart by the water and how the H attaches. With these, there isn't really any attaching, okay? Now these OHs, it's true, they will begin to undergo a water dance and they will find nearby waters and attach, or they will find, uh, pull, pull, they will actually find nearby waters and pull H's off of them, but when they do, they make an OH to replace themselves. Remember the water dance, it just continues. So there will always be some OH's in the solution, no matter what. There will always be some hydroxide. Okay, so we can write ourselves a little equation to describe this process. We can say that magnesium hydroxide, okay? Now, you'll notice that in this one, there's a slight difference. There's not really a reaction with the water. With the acid, the hydrogen that was released very quickly gets attached to a water. So it does interact with the water to make hydronium. Here, Really, all that happens is the magnesium splits apart from the hydroxide. And so there's the splitting apart of the two. The two ions become dissociated from each other. Of course, there are two OHs that are freed up. You can see from my picture, if you put this in the water, you will get one magnesium and two hydroxide ions. So that's how we balance it, right? two hydroxides and one magnesium. And of course, we must show that these are dissolved in the water with our little AQs. This one would be like a solid that we drop into the water. And so, that's what's happened. This is another dissociation equation. And all of that is just describing what this means. We haven't even done a reaction yet. All we've done is put some acid in some water in one cup and some of that magnesium hydroxide in another cup and we're ready to mix them, but this is what's happened in each cup. So what we're actually mixing, what we're actually mixing is this product plus this product. Do you see what I mean? We've already got that when we start. 
because that's what's going on in the cups before they get mixed. Okay? So, here's what I'm going to do. This is so important, I'm going to summarize it again in another way. We're going to draw ourselves some cups. Okay? So, if I write that, uh, that equation again, HCl plus magnesium hydroxide, and then over here, I have, I'm going to mix them together, and we're going to get um, magnesium chloride and water. And I'll put my little AQs back in. We're going to keep track of the cups. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is draw us the cups. So what this means is we have a cup right here with water. And we're going to take another cup over here that has water. And we're going to mix them together into one big cup. Okay, we're going to pour these two cups together into one big cup and see what happens. Okay. So what we have to remember is what we've got in the HCl cup, because of the AQ, is we've got H3O pluses and Cl minuses. I'm not going to draw all the little waters around them because we understand that. We know what that means. It's just too complicated. So this is what we're actually starting with. When you put the, the hydrogen chloride in the water, it turns into that. And we know why, because we just saw that water pulling them apart. The magnesium hydroxide, however, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change this to red just so we can keep track of it. All right? It's going to be pulled apart into magnesium. Well, let me make that smaller so it's not too, compl too confusing. It's going to be changed into magnesium 2 plus ion and there will be an OH and another OH. There'll be two OHs because look at this little two right here. See, there'll be two of them. In a different base, there might only be one. It depends on what molecule you're using or what compound, I mean. It, it can change. So we're just going to do it like that. So that's what's in the two cups before we even start. So when we mix them together, here's what we will have in our, in our big final cup. We will have H3O pluses, we will have Cl minuses, and we will have magnesium 2 pluses, and we will have OH minuses. All mixing around in there. And the reaction will be what happens to them. You can kind of see from the reaction what might happen. Once they're mixed all around, this magnesium here will be able to join up with this chlorine. But they don't actually get together. That's the funny thing. They're just kind of there, uh, floating around. Because remember, they're, they're surrounded by water. So if they try to get together, those water molecules keep them apart, and they stay dissolved. But they're in there. So they really don't do anything, do they? They were floating around in the first two cups. Now they're floating around in the second two cups. You see, that's what this AQ means. It doesn't mean they actually get together and bond. It just means that they're still floating around in the water. But you can see that the H from here could break away and join up with the H from here and make the water molecules. So what's really in this cup, okay, what's really in this final cup after the reaction happens that's like an intermediate stage. What's really in this final cup of water is, let's track it, some Mg2+, some magnesium ions that are still floating around. Ah, oh, it didn't go small. Because they're still aqueous, see? They're still Aq, this magnesium chloride. And that means there's still some chlorine floating around as well, surrounded by water unable to touch. But the H3Os are simply going to turn into H2Os when that H leaves. 
So this molecule is giving up an H and turning into an H2O. And this molecule is gaining an H and is also turning into an H2O. Right? So if we think about that process, the little h from here is joining with the OH over here to make this water right here. But it also leaves behind the water when that H leaves. So you get these waters. And of course, we went back to our equation. If we go back to this equation and we balance it, we see that we need two of these two of those and everything works out so that's what i'm trying to get you to, to realize is don't just memorize this without understanding what's going on in the cups critically important so now i'm going to teach you a way to remind you of what's going on in the cups when you're doing your equations sort of a little uh, accounting of all of the reactions that are happening okay so again, we're going to start from scratch. And I'm going to show you, because we don't draw cups and we don't draw pictures like we did now. But we can describe it all using the language of chemistry. So once again, I'll start with HCl plus magnesium hydroxide. And we'll write this over here and it'll be magnesium chloride and water. Whoops, that's going to be a Cl and water. We'll put in our little AQs where they belong to remind us. So again, we're starting with the same thing. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to write each step into the equation. So this is going to get a little bit, um, a little bit long, but that's okay. So for the first step, what we're going to do, oh, we should balance it as well. So let me put the two out here. First, you have to balance. It's very important to balance everything when you're doing the chemistry, right? Okay, everything looks good. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to color code it again. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll stay with black. Okay, so here's what happens. This HCl is going to break up. Well, if it breaks up, I'm going to get two H's out of there, two H pluses that are going to pull away from the Cl, right? And those will be aqueous, AQ. I'm also going to get two chlorine minuses that are going to pull away. So I'm describing that dissociation that happens. Okay? And I'll put a little sort of arrow here to show... But the HCl turns into that. That's what the AQ actually means. So I can think of it like that. Then I'm going to go back to the magnesium. I'm going to, I'm going to draw the magnesium here in green. So we can color code and watch and track where everything's going. Okay. So what's going to happen to that? Well, it's going to turn into a couple of things. The AQ means it's going to be pulled apart. So it's going to become magnesium two pluses, just as we saw in our cups, remember in the cups, uh, plus um, OH minuses. And there will be two OH minuses here, AQ. Okay, good. Now I'm going to make a correction. I should have done this at the start, and um, I didn't. So I'm going to go back to our acid. You see where I wrote the 2H plus there? Well, we know what happens. Those 2H pluses, they don't float free. They join with the water to make hydronium, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that as 2H3O pluses. Because that's really what they turn into. So that was kind of a, a mistake or an oversight on my part. Whoop, H, oh boy, H3O pluses. AQ. Not just H+, plus, because that H+, plus doesn't hang around. It gets joined up with a water molecule right away. Okay, so now here is what is happening to the magnesium hydroxide. Then I'll put my little arrow here. Mm -mm -mm. Now let's look at what the magnesium chloride is doing. 
I'm going to put the magnesium chloride. Uh, well, I'm going to write the magnesium in green because it was green on this side, on the left side, but I'm going to leave the chlorine in black because it was black on that side. Okay? So then what happens here is we get uh, a magnesium 2 plus again. We're pulling apart the magnesium chloride, and that will be aqueous dissolved in water. Plus, how many Cl minuses is that? Well, it's two of them, right? They happen to be written together as Cl2 here. But really, you have to remember what that means. It's two chlorine ions attached to magnesium. Remember from our very first lessons on ionic compounds. Those are also Aq. So you'll notice how the little dangly two becomes a big two out in front when we pull it apart. It's like Legos. And then, of course, the water is just kind of left over. So I'll write that in, uh, I guess, in blue here. Plus 2H2O. Okay, so this right here is describing what happens to the magnesium chloride. And, of course, the water then is just still water. So you see what we've done. We've written our cups. See, this turned into that when you put it in the water. So down below, we've written it as those things. And we've followed the balancing numbers as well. And then in the other cup, this turned into that. So we've written that down here in the balanced equation. And then, when we were finished, we saw that we had... These two things still floating around, they don't get to join because the water keeps them apart. They remain dissolved. And so those become this. And then lastly, we saw that we're making water in our final cup, which is written here. So we've basically written all of those things happening all at once in this equation. Now I'm just going to erase my little lines there. Oh, shoot, what did I do? There we go. No, oh, sorry. Back to the bottom. Smart board's being a little... Okay. So there we are. We have a name for this equation. We call it the ionic equation. Because it's got all the pulled apart versions instead of the joined together versions. So we call this one up here, we call it the overall equation. Overall, the first one. Because everything is stuck together. But the AQs remind us that that's not really the case. It's a shortcut. This is the ionic equation. And it shows us what's really in our cups. It's a more detailed version of the overall equation. But it shows us what's really in the cups. It shows us all the splitting apart that the water does. Okay, now, here's what's interesting. Here's what you can do. If you look at this equation, you can see that there are some things on the left side, on the reactant side, that are exactly the same as on the product side. In other words, after we mixed, they did nothing. Can you identify which ions on the left side are still floating around on the right side and have done nothing? If you look at them, you should be able to see them. I'm going to circle them in purple. Over here we have this magnesium, and over here we have the same guy. It's like he didn't do anything. He's still floating around. And then right here, this chlorine was over here, and he's still floating around. And remember, they can't join because the water has kept them apart. The dissolve. That's why they say AQ beside them. Because they're not doing anything, we call these guys something. We call them spectator ions. Spec they're just watching the show. They're not involved. Spectator ions. And if they're not involved in the reaction at all, why do we even care? We can just ignore them completely because they're not doing anything. 
So we can ignore, at this point, any spectator ions that are exactly the same on both sides of the equation. Well, what does that leave us with? It leaves us with only who's remaining. Let's write down now underneath who's left. The two H3O pluses are still left over from here. And the two OHs are still left over from here. And then on the other side, all we have are the two waters. I'm going to put my little AQs in where they belong, because that's very important to show AQ, AQ, and our liquid water. And if you look at this equation, that's it. That tells the whole story of what happened when we mixed these cups. That's really the only thing that changed. Now, of course, this is balanced with twos in it, but we don't really need a two and a two and a two if, if they're all the same, right? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So what we can do is we can write just, we don't need these twos. It's all one-to-one. -one. So we can write H3O plus plus OH minus makes water. Okay, and we can write the little AQs in here. Now, when you balance this, you got to remember something. This doesn't look like it's balanced, right? Because it looks like there's four. But remember what this means. It looks like there's four H's on the side. There isn't, though. All this is right here is an H who's riding on a water molecule. Right? He's riding right here on the water molecule. And he's the only thing that's coming off and going over here to react with him to make this H2O water. So this water that he was riding on, right, the H2O that's sort of underneath this isn't shown in the equation. He's not counting. So we can kind of subtract him away. And then in that case, then, there's only one H here. There's one H here, and it balances as two H's over there. And then this O balances with this O, because in our mind, we remember that hydronium, H3O+, plus, is really just a floating around H+, plus that's riding on a water. All this has to be remembered. <coughs> Excuse me. And so we call this the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation. It's still an ionic equation because if you look over there, it's got ions on the left side. We call it the net ionic equation because we've canceled out or removed all of those spectators who aren't doing anything. Every acid-base reaction can be reduced to this net ionic equation every time. Because the salt that's made is usually just a spectator and can be removed. So it doesn't matter what, two ac what acid or what base we use. If we follow this process of writing out the overall equation for the acid and base, and then breaking them apart into their ions as they would break apart in their cups, and then let them mix, it'll always come out to the same. So what we're going to do now is a sort of shortcut version of all this. We're going to do a question, and we're going to look at it without all the pictures and cups and everything else. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that I would expect you to be able to do now. Okay, so the question might say, um, write the overall ionic and net ionic equations. All three for uh, neutralization, that's what these are called, remember, of, we're going to use sulfuric acid and um, we'll use uh, another hydroxide. Sulfuric acid and let's use potassium hydroxide. 
as our base. So you should be able to notice which one of those is the acid and which one is the base. The sulfuric acid is obviously the acid because it's called acid. But remember, hydroxide is what gives us the idea of base in this case. Okay, so that's what we're going to be trying to do right now. So here's how we do it. We start off by writing the overall equation, and it's a neutralization, right? So sulfuric acid, what does it look like? Well, we have to remember how the acids work. You have to memorize that sulfuric acid is formed when you take sulfate. Remember the H becomes the ick. The sulfate joins with hydrogen. So we should know that that's H2SO4. It's a sulfate ion joined up with hydrogen. I'm going to put my AQs in after when I make my pen smaller, okay? So leave room for AQs. We're going to react that with something called potassium hydroxide. You know how to do that because you learned how to write formulas way back in the beginning of our course. So KOH, use your crisscross method and figure out how that works. So see how we're reviewing all the skills that we've learned. Then we've memorized that in a neutralization, and we've seen, of course, that there's really only two products ending up overall, the salt and the water. You know that the H's are going to go with the OH's to make the water, which leaves the salt has to be somehow potassium mixing with sulfate. So you can mix them together, and you can get potassium sulfate using the crisscross. And then the water. So that's really as easy as that. That's the overall equation. It's not quite done because we have to add our AQs and then we have to balance it. So remember, this acid is in a cup of water. So there's the AQ to show that. This potassium hydroxide is in a cup of water. This potassium sulfate will be in a cup of water, AQ. And then this, hydro or this water will just be liquid. Okay? All right. Now, what about balancing? Well, let's take a blue pen here and let's balance. It looks to me, if I just, and again, when you're balancing these equations, don't balance the, the waters and hy hydrogens and hydroxides first. Look at the other things, so the potassium and the sulfate. You can see how I only have one potassium here, so I need to add a two so it matches with the two potassiums over there, right? And then everything else seems to work out, except I'll have to make two waters, right? Because look, here there'll be an H plus and another H plus because of that. And here I'll have two OHs produced because of that, two hydroxides. And every H that goes with a hydroxide will make a water. So there's one water and there's another water, that's two waters. Or you can just count up the H's and O's if you want, and you can figure all that out. So what I'm going to do is erase all that stuff that I put on there. And I'll put my two back here. So there's my two waters. So there now is the completed overall equation. It's done. There you've got, you've got that one finished. The next thing it asked for, all right, so we've got the overall. The next thing is the ionic equation. So that's where we have to draw out what's actually happening in all the cups, right? So we'll start with this one. This is going to break up. The water's going to pull it apart. There are two H's there, so I write two H pluses, okay? You cannot write this. That's wrong, because these little things show things joined together. It shows how many are joined. These H's are not joined. They're floating around, right? In fact, they're going to join up with water molecules to make hydronium. So don't confuse that. The little two has to become a big two because these are all sort of floating around freely. And that leaves also then the sulfate, right? And so the sulfate is an SO4. Remember, it's a two minus ion and it'll be still floating around. That's why we learned all these polyatomic ions. Then we have to break up the potassium hydroxide to show what's happening in its cup. There are two potassiums 
which are plus one ions broken apart, AQ. And then there will be two OHs, two hydroxide ions broken apart. Then we have to move over to the potassium sulfate. And there will be two potassium ions broken apart in the water and two sulfate Oh, I'm sorry, only one sulfate ion, because there's no two out in front, right? So, one sulfate, SO4, two minus, AQ, and lastly, the two H2O. And if you want to put a liquid in brackets there, you can. There we have. Now, if you balance the overall one correctly, and you carried these numbers down, like you put the 2 down there, the 2H, right? Or sorry, this 2 went here, not there. Okay? If you, if you balance the first one right and you just copy, like this 2 right here, right? We put it there and there in front of those because they came from that. As long as you bring the balancing forward, it should automatically be balanced for you. You shouldn't have to change any of your balancing. That's assuming you did it right in the first place. But there is the net, or the overall, sort of, uh, well, we call it the ionic equation. There's the ionic equation done. So we have the overall equation up here, done right there, the big one. I'll put a line here. And then under the line, we have the ionic equation, which shows the splitting up of everything. And the only part that's a little bit tricky is remembering that these H's have to ride along on waters. So they become hydroniums. Okay? And that's all there is to that. And then the last thing we want to do is write the... We did the... Uh, where are we here? Okay, there's the ionic. Done. Now, the net ionic means we have to cross out the spectator ions. So anything that's exactly the same on both sides can be ignored or crossed out as a spectator ion. There's a sulfate here and a sulfate there that have not changed or done anything. So they don't count. Spectator. There's a potassium on this side, and there's a potassium on this side that have not done anything. They're the same on both sides. Spectator. All that's left then are this and this and the water. And you can see that it's turning out to be exactly the same as the one we had before. Right? So if I just write the last part of this, which would be the net ionic equation, if I carry it down, AQ plus 2OH minus AQ, and I get two H2Os. And of course, because it's 2 and 2 and 2, I don't really need those 2s. So what I can do is I can just write it as a 1 to 1 ratio, like this. And then we have uh, and then we have the final right here net ionic equation. And you notice I used a different acid and a different base, but it still came out to the exact same thing. This is all that's actually happening in any acid base reaction. Hydroniums are reacting from the acid. Hydroniums from the acid are reacting with hydroxides from the base to make water. The only tricky part about this is uh, it looks funny. It doesn't look like it's balanced because it looks like you have too many H's on the left side. But remember, this is really just an H that's riding on a water molecule. And so we don't count that water molecule that it's riding on. So when we see H3O, we just remember that's really just an H. So that H going with this OH is what produces the water over here. So it is balanced. And that's sort of the end of the story of how acids and bases react. And all we have left to do now is practice. I should point one more thing out. Sometimes it's possible. I'm just going to point this out, but we're not going to worry too much about it. You see this little AQ? Sometimes it's possible that the salt that's made is not very soluble, and it could precipitate out of the equation. Okay? It could precipitate out as a solid. 
And so that would change things just a wee tiny bit, but the general overall acid base part remains the same. So we won't worry about that. I'll just mention it because there might be some, some people who are really keen and who think of that. Uh, otherwise, we can just call this, call it a day once we get to this point down here.